Reality Maintainer presents, I'm very excited about today's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Your mission statement makes you the leader of your own life. You create your own destiny and secure the future you envision. It is this abundance mentality that is so important for creating success. It is because most people listen with the intent to reply, not to understand. If I can go there in the mind, I can go there in the body. Here are the seven habits of highly affected people. Number one, be proactive. Your life doesn't just happen. Whether you know it or not, it's carefully designed by you and the choices you make. You choose to be happy and you choose to be sad. You choose to make fast decisions and stick to them. You choose to waver on your decisions. You choose success, you choose failure, you choose courage, and you choose fear. Just remember that every moment and every situation provides you an opportunity to make a brand new choice in your life. And when you do that, it gives you the perfect opportunity to do things differently, to produce more positive results. So being proactive is about taking responsibility for your life. You can't keep blaming everything on your parents or on your grandparents or even on your siblings. Proactive people recognize that they are what Kobe calls response able. They don't blame genetic circumstances, conditions, or conditioning for their behavior. They know they choose their behavior. Reactive people, on the other hand, are often affected by their physical environment. They find external sources to blame for their behavior. If the weather is good, they feel good. If the weather is crap, they feel like crap. All of these external forces that are outside of our mind, that are outside of our control. They act as stimulus that we respond to. Now, between the stimulus and the response is your greatest power. You have the freedom to choose your response. One of the most important things you choose is what you say. Your language is a good indicator of how you see yourself. A proactive person uses proactive language. I can, I will, I prefer and so on and so forth. A reactive person uses reactive language, I can't, or I have to, or if only. Reactive people believe they are not responsible for what they say and do. They don't have a choice. Instead of reacting to or worrying about conditions over which they have little to no control, proactive people focus their time and energy on things that they can control. The problems, challenges, and opportunities we face all fall into two areas. The circle of concern and the circle of influence. Now, proactive people, they focus their efforts, their time, their energies on the circle of influence. They work on things they can do something about. Their health, their children, their parents, problems at work. Reactive people, on the other hand, they focus the majority of their efforts in the circle of concern. Things that they have very little control over. When you gain an awareness of the area that you spend most of your energy, that's how you can make the first step in becoming a proactive person. Number two, begin with an end in mind. The ability to envision in your mind what you can't at the moment see with your eyes. It's based on the principle that all things are created twice. There's the mental creation, which is first, and then the second, which is physical creation. The physical creation follows the mental just as a building follows the blueprint. If you don't make a conscious effort to visualize who you are and what you want in life, then you empower other people and other circumstances around you to shape you and your life by default. And you don't want to do that. You want to be in control. It's about connecting again with with your own uniqueness, and then defining the personal, moral, and ethical guidelines within which you can most happily express and fulfill yourself. Begin with the end in mind means to begin each day, each task, or project, each relationship with a clear vision of your desired direction and destination, and then continue by flexing your proactive muscles to make things happen. Number three, put first things first. To live in a more balanced life, you have to recognize that not doing everything that comes along, it's okay. There's no need to overextend yourself. All it takes is realizing that it's all right to say no when necessary, and then focus on your highest priorities. Habit one says, you're in charge, you're the creator. Being proactive is about choice. 
Habit two is the first or mental creation. Beginning with the end in mind, it's all about vision. Habit three is the second creation, the physical creation. This habit is where habits one and two come together. It happens day in and day out, moment by moment. It deals with many of the questions addressed in the field of time management, but that's not what it's all about. Habit three is about life management as well. Your purpose, values, roles, and priorities. What are first things to you? Number four, think win-win. Now, think win-win, it's not about being nice, and it's definitely not about a quick fix technique. It's a character-based code for humor interaction and collaboration. Most of us learn to base our self-worth on comparison and competition. We think about succeeding in terms of someone else failing. That is, if I win, you lose. And if you win, I lose. With this type of thinking, life becomes zero-sum game. There's only so much pie to go around. And if you get a big piece, there's going to be less for me. It's not fair. We all play this game. But how much fun is it anyways? Win-win sees life as a cooperative agreement, not a competitive one. Win-win is a frame of mind and heart that constantly seeks mutual benefit in all human interactions. Win-win means agreements or solutions are mutually beneficial and satisfying. A person or organization that approaches conflict with a win-win attitude possesses three vital character traits. Integrity, sticking with your true feelings, values, and commitments. Maturity, expressing the ideals and feelings with your courage and consideration for the ideals and feelings of others. And finally, abundance mentality, believing there is plenty to go around for everyone. To go for a win-win, you not only have to be empathetic, but you have to also be confident. You not only have to be considerate and sensitive, you also have to be brave. To achieve the balance between courage and consideration is the essence of real maturity and is fundamental to this win-win philosophy. Number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Communication is the most important skill in life. You spend years learning how to read, how to write, and years learning how to speak. But what about listening? What training have you had that enables you to listen? So you really deeply understand another human being. Probably none, right? If you're like most people, you probably seek first to be understood. You want to get your point across, and in doing so, you may end up ignoring the other person completely and pretending that you're listening, selectively hearing only certain parts of the conversation, or focus only on the words being said and not the meaning of the words. So why does this happen? It's because most people listen with the intent to reply, not to understand. You listen to yourself as you prepare in your mind what you're going to say next. You filter everything you hear through your life experiences and through your frame of reference. You check what you hear against your autobiography and see how it measures up. And you decide prematurely what the other person means before he or she finishes their sentence. Number six, synergize. Now to put it simply, synergy means two heads are better than one. Synergize is the habit of creative cooperation. It's teamwork, open-mindedness, and the adventure of finding new solutions to old problems. But it doesn't just happen on its own. It's a process, and through that process, people bring all of their personal experience and expertise to the table. Together, they can produce far better results that they could not do individually. Synergy lets us discover jointly things we are much less likely to discover by ourselves. It's the idea that the whole is greater than some of the parts. When people begin to interact generally and they're open to each other's influence, they begin to gain new insight. Do you truly value the mental, emotional, and physiological differences among people? Or do you wish everyone could just agree with you so we could all just get along? Differences should be seen as strengths, not weaknesses. They add some excitement to life. Okay, we finally made it to number seven, sharpen your saw. Now, sharpen the saw means preserving and enhancing the greater asset you have, you. It means having a balanced program for your self-renewal in the four areas of your life, physical, social, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Now, here are some examples of different activities. Physical, beneficial eating, exercising, and resting. Social, emotional, making social and meaningful connections with other friends and family. Mental, learning, reading, writing, teaching, spiritual, spending time in nature, expanding spiritual self through meditation, music, arts, 
prayer and service. As you renew yourself in each of these four areas, you create growth and change in your life. Sharpening the saw keeps you fresh, so you can continue to practice the other six habits. You increase your capacity to produce and handle the challenges around you when you sharpen your saw. Without this renewal, the body becomes weak, the mind becomes mechanical, emotions become raw, the spirit insensitive, and the person selfish. Feeling good just doesn't happen. Feeling good is something you have to work on. Living a life in balance means taking the necessary time to renew yourself. Again, it's all up to you. It's all in your circle of influence. It's something you control. You can renew yourself through relaxation, or you can totally burn yourself out by overdoing everything. Just remember that every day provides a new opportunity for renewal. A new opportunity to recharge yourself instead of hitting the wall. All it takes is the desire, knowledge, and skill to know how to do it. Then, do what you need to do to make things better. Once you get over your fear of change, you just might find that there's something great waiting for you on the other side. What do you think? Are you ready to change your life? What's been holding you back? Share your thoughts and comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on that notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.